Blessings folks, how are ya? Uh, today we'd like to, for us to take a look, or should I say, bring back to the remembrance of that which we always knew. See, no one really teaches you anything, it's just really a matter of being reminded of things that you had forgotten. Hence the reason why we're here on planet Earth is to re-remember, because one of the side effects of being here is not having the ability to remember. By the way, that is not designed according to the initial design plan that has been orchestrated through the fallen, those beings who decide that they want to play with other beings' lives, which is in complete, excuse me, which is in complete violation to that of the law of one or the universality of love for all life. So, let's take a look at the tones, colors, and dimensional level relationship to the chakras on a 15-dimensional, or should I say, through the 15-dimensional time matrix. Uh, let's take a look at this from the perspective first of the harmonic universe. It takes three dimensions to make up an experienced reality. Okay, hence we are in dimensions one, two, and three. I would like to ask you a question, something to ponder here, just for a moment before we proceed. Have you ever experienced dimension one by itself? I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm just asking the question. Have you ever experienced dimension two by itself? Have you ever experienced dimension three by itself? Or rather, do you experience dimensions 1, 2, and 3 simultaneously in order to experience this particular reality? Well, it's experiencing dimensions 1, 2, and 3 simultaneously is what allows you to experience this three-dimensional reality. So why is it those that see to look at dimension 4, 5, and 6 as being separate from one another when dimensions 1, 2, and 3 is what's required to make up a universal experience. We can say that with a surety because we experience this. The concept behind the 15-dimensional time matrix is that it takes three dimensions to make up a harmonic universe. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's something we will revisit here sometime later, I suppose. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to take a look briefly at the tones related to this harmonic universe 1 and harmonic universe 2. So dimensions 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, and 6. We're also going to briefly kind of take a look at the identities in relationship to these harmonic universes. So beginning with harmonic universe 1, which consists of dimensions 1, 2, and 3, which you and I reside in, we have tones, we have colors, we have within the dimensional level that which these particular, uh, or, or should I say, what these are made up of in regards to substance, the names given for that, and the location of the chakra. So the tone for dimension one is chi. Color is red, proton units, the base or the tail or tailbone area within the vessel or in the body. And then we have ki and then we have orange and we have electron units known as the sacral chakra and then we have re yellow neutron units solar plexus let's look at these three tones these three tones are meant to be spoken as one this is one word Chi, Ri, or Chi, Ki, Ri. 
excuse me, I apologize. Chi Ki Ri. I'm a bit dyslexic. Chi Ki Ri. So that's the tone that makes up the first harmonic universe. Red, orange, yellow. Those are the colors that come from those tones. It begins with the tones, then you have the manifestation of the color in relationship. The dimension level, these are the units that is comprised of, or the names given for those units, and the location of the chakras. Right? So, harmonic universe one, dimensions one, two, and three, and then we, which we have, this is, let's, let's, I guess it's important to take a look at the identity. So the identity here is known as incarnate identity, which is a carbon-based life form, right? Keep it simple. So incarnate identity, carbon-based. We move to the second harmonic universe. We have prana. We know that as being the heart chakra. Mayan units, green, mana, blue, dion units, throat chakra, and treya, indigo. That's interesting, right there, that color, indigo. You've probably heard that before, indigo children, right? Well, this is where the indigo children come from, dimension six. This so happens to be the soul identity. Dimension six is where the soul is, is is where the soul is related. That's where it's found. Now, I know people say we are a soul. Well, no, that's an identity. That is part of what we are within this universal construct, but that is not the entirety of what we are. There is other identities above that, within harmonic universe three, or excuse me, harmonic universe four, and harmonic universe five. All right. So blue, so we got, well, let's just take a look at these three tones. They're meant again, like I said, to be said all together as one word. So it's pranamanatreya. Pranamanatreya, that makes up the second harmonic universe. All right. So not that these dimensions or the sub dimensions or which would be subharmonics found within uh, the dimension which would also be considered as being planes of existence okay because it is a harmonic construct these are harmonic universes I did a video on this in respect how many dimensions that does it take three dimensions to make up a universe and I kind of break it down on a harmonic level and I use the keyboard a musical instrument in order to kind of communicate this idea it is subdivided through these different fundamentals and subharmonics and it's very interesting study it's a, you know so but point being is that in order to experience the sacred harmonic universe it requires three dimensions why does it require three dimensions because each dimension is a series of flash line sequences that's another way to look at it it's also, another way to look at it is to consider it a scalar wave grid. And so we have three scalar wave grids, each flashing on at different angles from one another in order to create this experience that we have in regard to it residing within a harmonic universe. It's holographic, but because we are flashing off and on, as a multi-dimensional being residing within this particular interface known as the incarnate body, we experience it as a reality. And it is real. Unless we can change our flash line sequence and then we're no longer subject to the laws, or if you want to use the word laws here, in respect to the design of these flash line sequences. An example that I gave in the video, other video that I'm talking about, was within the New Testament you have Jesus walking through a wall. Well, what he's doing is he's readjusting his flash line sequence to accommodate the dimension 1, 2, and 3. He probably came out of 3, 4, or should I say 4, 5, and 6, which is the second harmonic universe, 
and from those flash line sequences he was able to pass through these walls here and once he got through he aligned himself to the flash line sequence that fits this particular reality and there that's the reason why you know he said what he said to the to the disciples he says you know I'm not a ghost check me out you know feel me see if I'm not solid well the reason why he's solid is because now he's 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 accommodated the flash line sequence within his vessel to fit that of the flash line sequence of the first harmonic universe so he's going to going to feel solid okay all right so again this second harmonic universe which is pranamatraya is that's the tone or the combination of tones making up that one name for that and the different colors relate, related to we have within the sixth dimension and or not, notably the color associated with the tone uh, treya as being indigo you've heard of indigo children right and there's been a series of incarnates over the different generations I think we're at the third indigo uh, wave I suppose I guess you call it that the third wave um, that's the soul six dimensional again the identity we have incarnate identity this is the soul identity right here the soul is not all that we are the soul is part of what we are okay it is an identity body that has a particular function I will trust my spirit over my soul any day of the week. The soul, the soul works as a storage device. It records everything. Everything. So any being that needs to access anything from you, it's through this design that they're accessing that information like like uh, like life reviews. That's where this information is coming from. It's coming from the soul that's been recorded. And the thing of it is, when you're here on Earth, we have frequency mutation, and we have a lot of suffering here. And this is not natural to the design. So any being or any program that says NDE or otherwise that tells you that it's a gift to be here, uh, no, I don't know where any place that where there's suffering, that's a gift. So I'm not buying that one. Just not going to buy it. Uh, I see that as a program. I don't see that as coming from source. I see that as coming from the fallen. And that's to maintain your ignorance and to keep you to uh, kind of just keep going back and recycling. Okay, so, yeah, that's something to talk about. Because briefly I want to talk about that. But not just yet wait till i get to a particular identity then i'll i'll mention that pertaining to what i'm referring to in regards to the fallen because most people associate the fallen within dimensions one two and three and four five six or the first and second harmonic universe but that's not where the problem started the problem started high up and so because it started up high up that means we have distortions from within higher dimensions on down okay and i'm going to touch in on that here in a second but again we're looking at the relationship of harmonic universe the tones are very important to remember because the tones is what makes up the language remember that the tones is what makes up the universal language okay and we use these different tones because they have a, a, a lot of, uh, well, we're going to get into that, not in this particular video, but later on I'm going to get into that. You're going to find it very, very, very interesting, and you're going to go, I remember that. <laughs> okay, so incarnate identity, dimensions 1, 2, and 3, chi, ki, ri, and uh, harmonic universe number 2, dimensions 4, 5, and 6, right, pranamanatreya. Indigo, soul, sixth found there. There is the uh, the units related or the dimensional the, uh, the name for that, as we know where the chakra is at. It's when you get into the 15 dimensions that you probably not familiar where the chakras reside at. So we're going to touch in on that here in a second. But let's continue with the identity here. Okay. All right. So seven, eight, and nine. 
right? So let's, let's okay, we have carbon-based biology here, dimensions one, two, and three, four, five, and six. We have carbon silica-based biology, and then from seven, eight, nine, or third, the third harmonic universe, we have silica-based biology. And yes, it's a biology. It's a form. It's not all ghosty and all this other stuff. It's it, of course, it's going to be more lighter, if you want to use that term. It's not going to be as dense as this, which is a good thing. But it's still form, and it's it's still experienced. It, it really, actually, it's experienced more in depth than what we experience here, way more deeper than what we experience here. So it's not like it's getting less, it becomes more. This is not such a great thing here on planet Earth, okay? It's just really not. And you're here for one reason, as far as I know, and that's to express the love that, that's really needed here and change things on a frequency vibrational level in relationship to the other consciousness that's here. That's the only mission that I can see purposeful here, and it's not so easy to do, is it? But that's it. At least that's my conviction. Anyhow, so uh, Harmonic Universe number three. Let's take a look at Earth. Earth is here, one, two, three. Tara is the second Harmonic Universe, four, five, six. And Gaia is in seven, eight, nine, okay? And then there's one above that, right? Which was destroyed because of the war. Uh, that's another subject, but I'm, you know, I'll touch on it a little bit, but here we go. I'm taking too much time, so I'm going to move on. I want to focus on not necessarily the identity for 789, but I would like to talk about um, I really, really rather let, let's, let's just let's kind of go up to uh, 10, 11, 12, because I want to try to keep this short. Otherwise, it's going to take too long, and you're going to get bored with me. And if you haven't already. <laughs> okay, so 10, 10, 11, 12. So this is known as the avatar identity, okay? Now, d from dimensions 11 down is where we have distortions. So there is such a thing as called, it's, there's such a thing as a dark avatar. I was talking about the fallen. Now, a lot of people think of these beings within these higher dimensions, with, within with, with um, within the eleventh dimension, as or as the example being. Actually, it's eleven and a half, but um, is where you find the distortions. But they think of this as being not compromised. But the truth is, this is where the this is where the this is where the first war took place. This is where we had Ermatia, which is the, the other name for Earth. It's above Gaia in the, in the fourth harmonic universe. It was destroyed. This is where a lot of this is where the trouble started, man. So we have black, we have what is called dark avatars, and those are a lot of beings that people are worshiping on this Earth. They're not God, and they're not the creator of all things, but they pretend to be. And they can heal you, and they can do a lot of miraculous things that make you think that they are, the, they that they are source, and they are not. That's another subject to get into. But I just would like to tell you, what you experience here on Earth, and some of these NDEs that people have, they're full of programs, and they're full of half truths. Some of the experiences people have are absolutely true. That some of them, them are related to programs. I always know the ones that are real because the reals, real ones always put you back into that God state that you are in, that normally that you that you you come out of the individual, excuse me, the individuation of source that you are. Those are the true experiences. Everything else that has personalities that fits like Earth personalities, those are questionable to me, and especially when they tell you that coming here is a gift. Not under these conditions, it's not. You do not expand outside of anything other than joy and love. You do not expand, and you do not, do not progress, and you do not, uh, uh, you know, perpetuate creation through suffering. That is not part of the design. Okay, this was created in love and joy, and that's the whole purpose of it being is that. 
So when you have all these other things, those other things are fallen condition and they're, it's perpetuated through programs and other beings that are pretending to be source. All right, I know this is a very touchy subject, all right, but it's true nonetheless. All right, so let's look at the chakra system in relationship like 13, 14, and 15, where that's located, and we'll go ahead and close this out because I know I'm probably taking too long with all this. So the key ra she is what's known as the primal light fields, all right? These primal light fields, that name, ki is dimension 13, 14, 15, making up the, the, the 15th, or excuse me, the fifth harmonic universe. And so for the 13th dimension or the 13th chakra, as it would be, that's found in the earth core, the center of the earth, okay? And later on we'll explain the reason why all this stuff is, because your body is a little universe, okay? It's really another, it's basically a, a model of the universe. That's the reason why when you hear the expression used, you have the whole universe within you, that is true, okay? It's not just figurative, it's literal. All right, so universe number one, universal one for 14th chakra, it's found 36 uh, inches above the head or three feet above the head. And universal two, the 15th, is beneath the earth that's out into space okay and we'll again like I said we'll touch more in on this but remember these names here and these tones this is the language of the universe this is actually this is the first universal language spoken this is from which the Christ comes from which some people use the word Christ or Christ consciousness we'll get into that too and actually what that really is but you probably want to take a snapshot of this, you know, a little screenshot. Um, if you want to try contact me, you can go on my main page and you can contact me directly. And if you want this chart, you know, I can send it to you. I have no way for it to be downloaded anywhere. I just, I just don't have that right now. But there we go. Blessings to you. Remember, you are the beloved. You are an individuation of source. You have birthrights that are equal to all life in that of source itself and remember you are the love that you have always been peace everybody